Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Logan and today I want to show off and talk with you about the Legend of the Wizard Laird Lenormand deck from Malpertui. Um, this is the same creator whose first and last name are currently slipping my mind, I'm so sorry, um, who created the Tildwick Tarot as well as the... Mm, there are two, a few other Lenormand decks that he's created that the titles are slipping my mind, but so this one is really interesting. It has very dark imagery, which I'm a big fan of. It all looks very uh, <laughs> brooding weather on the moors type of vibes. Um, and it's based off of Scottish legend about this one particular laird, um, or lord, I suppose, uh, who I believe resided in Aberdeenshire. I'm not... I'm probably going to mispronounce everything. I'm so sorry. Um, and yeah, this this particular lord uh, was rumored to have like delved really deeply into occult studies, necromancy, things like that. Um, it's rumored that back in the day, he even in full sunlight would not cast a shadow. Um, you know. Apparently, till this day, school children say that if you uh, if you circle his grave a hundred times, uh, you'll <laughs> bring him back up from the depths of hell. Um, it said that on New Year's Eve, I think New Year's Eve, um, you can still see uh, apparitions and whatnot on the property of the castle, or it's it's a castle and everything but name, but the huge estate. Um, you can still see ghosts showing up in the form of like horse-drawn carriages, and often it's said that those horses are headless. Um, it's said that when the nearby lake freezes over that there's weird tracks on the surface of the ice. Um, so there's a lot of fun, ooky spooky uh, lore around this uh, the subject of this deck. Um, I find it really, really well done too as not just aesthetically and all, but the lore is present. You can definitely feel the moodiness of the subject, but it never overtakes, overtakes things too much thematically. You have, you don't have to have any knowledge of this particular lore to use this deck, which I always love with a themed deck. Um, this little guidebook goes into excellent detail about the lore. Um, my only gripe with this is that the text is incredibly tiny. Uh, however, you can find a version of this deck on on the late artist. He sadly he sadly passed away within the last couple of years. Um, but I believe his family is keeping his website going, uh, as well as his shop. And you can find this version of the deck as well as a larger one, which I assume comes with a more legible print um, at mopertwist.com, which is I'll, uh, I'll link down in the description below. But so let's get into it. So for dog, we have this lovely, what well, to me looks like a saluki. I'm not certain if it is, uh, but that's the vibe it gives me. Again, we have this very hazy sort of overcast vibe to so many of the cards, and I really enjoy that. I am not a fan of glossy cardstock, but that being said, the cards are really nice and sturdy and I think it's beautiful enough for me to uh, not mind that. The gilding is a really nice high quality on it. I haven't had it peel or flake or anything like that. And the backs are this gorgeous, almost like mosaic tile pattern. It's really pretty. The deck also comes with a Joker card, which I apologize if any of this is hard to see due to possible glare. Um, and an extra man and woman card, so that you have a bit more freedom in your readings. So we start with dog. Bouquet. The imagery in this deck to me is very gothic. I don't know if that's the appropriate term considering the time and location that it's based on, but it reads very gothic to me. Uh, this letter card is one of the ones that actually made me want to get the deck in the first place. Um, I've known the Tildwick Tower was gorgeous for for years because it always crops up people you know looking for it it was out of print for a long time so you get familiar with the imagery even if you don't have the deck um i always thought that one was stunning but the imagery in this deck i find to be even easier to see like tildwick a lot of it can be pretty gauzy it's just a stylistic choice um, and it's done expertly it's just 
this one you get a bit more clarity in what's going on in the image and I really appreciate it. I love this writing desk. I love this, I don't know if it would be beveled glass or what you call it. Um, I've seen this type of glass on windows a lot in like uh, British television shows. It's not something I've seen very often in the US uh, where I live, but I love it. I think it's gorgeous. The way light dances off of it is absolutely captivating. I love that for a letter card. Here's one of our woman cards. Let's so look at the two of them. So we do have options. Set her side. Uh, fish. I can't tell what kind of fish these are, but it looks like they've been caught and they are now hanging out. I don't know, possibly to dry. I've <laughs> I've never spent much time on docks. I don't know what happens with with fishing. Though I do enjoy fishing by a lakeside. Uh, moon, very very hazy, a little ominous. Feels a bit lonely. I think it's really pretty though. Um, I also appreciate that the titles and the uh, playing card inserts are pretty like unobtrusive in my opinion. Tree, I'm curious to, to see what kind of tree this is. The bark is reminding me of almost of pine, but the foliage doesn't look, the foliage is not pine. So I'm curious if the, if the little guidebook will say what that is. And the guidebook is really extensive. I, I appreciate it. I just wish the text was larger. Snake, we have the head of the serpent right here as it moves maybe through some hay or grass. It's just such a mood. It's such a broody, cool period piece of the deck. I, I really enjoy it. Ship. I wanted to do this deck, so we have Sun, which I think is brilliant. And it too, even in all of its bright brilliance, you still have that bit of like haze or fog going on, which I think is thematically fitting. Uh, I was going to say one of the reasons I wanted to look at this deck on here was that last I checked, which admittedly was some months ago, uh, there weren't really any English language flip throughs or walk throughs of this deck. And I, I decided to purchase it based off of, I think, a French review. Um, I don't speak French, but <laughs> so anyway, long story, only slightly less long. Um, I think it would be cool if there were more um, reviews of this deck on YouTube in more languages. So here we are. Mountain. It's very lovely. It's a very, it's a very quiet and like subtle color palette, which I appreciate. Things are very, I don't know, they feel antiquated. They feel like these have been sitting in a desk somewhere for decades, if, if not longer, and you just happened upon them and trudged them out. And, I don't know, they feel old, and I'm really into that. I think they might have felt a bit a bit older, a bit more in line with that sort of aesthetic and vibe if it was like a matte linen finish or something as opposed to the glossy, but they're still beautiful, and I do think the gloss does the, uh, the imagery justice, so no complaints. Just more personal preference things popping up here and there. Fox. I love the slight green cast that this one has. Um, rider, this is very striking. Key, I would expect nothing else. Nothing else for this sort of a deck than this sort of a key. Um, also really, I think this pattern in the background is very beautiful. There's a lot going on in the images, but the artists, and again, I'm sorry for flaking out on his name. I want to say it was Neil. Um, he can put all of these very expressive, loud pattern things together in such a way that they're very gentle. And I think that's impressive. It's very impressive. So this is Ring. Birds. I do appreciate that they're in flight. And I feel like that we have one bird looking this way, a bird looking over there, this one looking over here. Um, it puts me in mind of like a bunch of birds just kind of um, taking off as a big cloud, freaking out. Maybe there's a bit of worry or panic or something has spooked them. It, at least to my, you know, non-bird watcher eye, it feels like it embodies the nature of the card, which I appreciate, as opposed to just, you know, absolute order happening in the bird's card. Scythe. Book. 
also think is really cool. Who's not a fan of skulls in, or in libraries? Lilies. I also found this one beautiful. Again, I'm just a sucker for these windows with this type of glass. Um, I think the lilies he's chosen are beautiful. Just a beautiful image. I also appreciate that even though we technically have borders, they they blend in pretty well with the like subject portion of the image. It's just so artfully done. Child, we have a little bust. I'm always a fan of a bust in a deck. Coffin. So we have this pattern on top of the skeleton, which I think is really cool. It's not exposed, it's sealed away as our coffins. Uh, <laughs> not a prolific announcement there, but mm. I still appreciate it. Stork. This is a really beautiful stork card. Oh, storks plural. I wonder if there's a reason that it's plural. I have to look that up in the book. Um, I would offer to look it up in the book right here, right now, but it's so hard uh, for me to see the text that I don't want to put any of you through me trying to read it. Here we have cross. I'm uh, I'm always a fan when we when we don't have a religious uh, emblem cross card, like when you can be a bit more inventive with it or have like an albatross. But for what it is, it's beautiful. It's very pretty. Here's our other man card. So it looks like this one is a bit younger than that one. I'm wondering if in the woman cards, if there's also a bit of an age difference. Between, oh, the other woman card is in here. <laughs> Oops. I have to check that out later. Um, the anchor card. It's run aground, which I find interesting. There's also a figure standing on a pier way in the background. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm curious if there are any insights in the guidebook as to that choice of imagery as well. Clover. You just feel like you could just reach down and put your hands in the dirt. It has such a... <sighs> such a nice calming vibe to it. At least for me, I... I really enjoy like working in flower beds and stuff. So this just makes me want to get out and do that. Tower, quite beautiful. I can't, I can't tell what this, if this is a figure ascending a step or if somebody's falling off the side of it or if, or if it's a banner or something. I have to look at that as well. There's a lot going on in these images. I don't think you need every little tiny detail by any means to accurately and reliably read with it, but I'm just curious and nosy. So mice, it's a pantry. We have a little mouse right there. We have a mouse right there. We have one right there. I think we have two here. This is kind of fun. It's like those <laughs> very Where's Waldo vibes going on there. House, which I, I do need to take a second look to see if this is actually an image of that house in Aberdeenshire that the wizard Laird lived in. Or, not the wizard Laird, but Laird uh, Alexander, I can't remember his last name. Subject of the deck. Might be where he lived. So I'm curious. This is a stunningly beautiful heart. I don't know if this is a brooch or like the top of a, a jar or a canister of some sort. But it is stunning. And then we have what looks like a tapestry print behind it. Very faint. It's just, it's so beautiful and tasteful. There. That's very interesting as well. So like instead of having an actual animal, we are seeing like a stone representation statue. There's a word for that. <laughs> We're seeing a statue of a bear. Um, I suppose on top of like a um, some sort of a pillar, maybe like part of a gate. I don't know, part of a fence. And then we're gonna end this on whip, which is very stunning. I love that it's you can still see like texture from the clouds and such stuff in the background through the actual material of the whip itself. I'm also unfamiliar with whips that are tied together like this for each of the, is it called a thong or a, a, the string part? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it's a really pretty deck. It's a very thoughtful deck um, as evidenced by this chunky little guidebook. I know it doesn't look chunky, but when you consider how tiny the text is on the inside, get yourself a pair of readers and this will become a chunky guidebook. I'm fairly certain you'll agree. Um, there's Grand Tableau instructionals in the back. There's various other spread information. Um, there's even information on combination meanings, like uh, 
if you draw lilies and snake, what could be a potential meaning? Like there's info on that. He talks a little bit about extra cards and using cards as people. Um, and then in the beginning, my favorite portion of it for the first good few pages, we have information about the folklore around this place itself and around the man that inspired the deck. So if you are into decks that are a little ooky spooky yet tasteful, I think this is a really, really solid, solid choice. Um, I will probably dig into this uh, in the autumn. It has a very autumnal feel to me, and I think it will be perfect for Halloween and Samhain, so I, uh, I recommend it. And by all means, if you do want to get this deck, please go to uh, malkertweets.com and purchase it directly from the artist's family. There are a lot of counterfeits going around on Etsy and Mercari, and it's disgusting. This is a man who spent so much of his life making beautiful art, and I feel like one of the best ways to honor that is to purchase it directly from his family so that the people who loved him can see that his art is still being loved and respected and not have it go to some slimy bootlegger. So, yeah, uh, I hope this was fun for you. Thanks for hanging out with me, and until next time.